Uh, that's a tough one. Well, the Leafs are already out of the playoffs. What's your reaction to the loss? Meh. Okay, but what if they won? <laughs> you ready? Ding, ding. Big news. What? Oh, seriously? Uh, no pigs yet. What? Uh, what was he doing? Wow. Bring him on. Beautiful. Leafs lose 4-2 to two to the New Jersey Devils. Two teams that probably know better than anyone that two points in October is just as good as two points in April. And in this one, the Devils just outplayed a team that looked tired and had the wind taken out of their sails. Yet another back-to-back -back with travel for the Leafs. You know, I like baseball, but there's a lot of things set up about the MLB that I hate. The series that they have, I'm for. Okay, Toronto flies to New Jersey, they play New Jersey twice. Some point later in the season, New Jersey goes to Toronto and does the same thing. Because the whole point of the schedule changes after the lockout were to build rivalries. And I'm sure you guys will agree, nothing builds rivalries like four games spread over seven months. And I think playing the same team back to back more often will help you learn, you know, some of their players. Because a lot of Leaf fans were watching that game last night going, man, that Matias Tedenby kid's pretty good. The rest of them are going, who the hell's Matias Tedenby? Regardless, New Jersey's offense was working in this one. Kovalchuk, whack! Kovalchuk becoming the third Russian player to score 30 goals in the NHL this season behind Alex Ovechkin and Nikolai Kuleman. Tenby, who I mentioned earlier, pass across. Wham! Yeah, I'm wearing skates. It's the second last video of the season and the Leafs lost, okay? Wah! And about a minute later, James Reimer not getting a whole lot of help in this one. Talinder, wham! 3-0. And Jaguar comes in and plays the third period, and damn it, good for Jaguar. Because I know it's the second last game of the season, I know the pressure's off for the Devils, because not only are they out of the playoffs, but they have a 3-0 lead, but he played solid. Which ended up making the game pretty interesting. Because on the power play, Joffrey Lupul, nice pass over to Phil Kessel, he shoots, that's his 31st, and the Leafs are now down 3-1. Lupul continues to kill it, and Phil Kessel now has 29 points in his last 28 games. And let me just repeat some things I've read in the blogosphere and Barilkosphere over the last little bit. When Phil Kessel stunk, it was his fault the Leafs stunk. He's producing and the Leafs are doing great, nobody mentions the guy. And I've said this before, if you're gonna kill a guy in the media and he deserves it, fine. But when that guy you criticize turns it around, you better give him the props he deserves. Now the Leafs down five on three and Tyler Bozak's got the face off. Gets the puck and with blazing speed manages to pull off a breakaway. Dangles the jock off Martin Brodeur, who had a fantastic game by the way, and you know what? I'm writing a preliminary list for the Leafs play of the year and I thought I was done, but you know what? That's going on the list. And what makes that even more amazing, think of how long the Leafs have been around. Tyler Bozak is just the second ever Toronto Maple Leaf to score on a three on five. And Bozak, for the most part, hasn't had a very good season. His confidence has seemed low, but that's a damn good feather to put in your cap heading into the summer. To be able to say that he's done something that only Daryl Sittler has done in a Leaf uniform, that's huge. However, much like the Leaf season, the Leafs come close to the comeback, but not so much. Patrick Elias scores on the empty net. That's all she wrote. Now I'm going to ask you a two-part question of the game here. Will J.S. Jaguar be back in the NHL next season? Question two, if he is back, will it be with the Toronto Maple Leafs? For the right price and if he understands the role he's playing, eh, maybe. I would say probably not, but maybe. And I would love to see him at least play somewhere in the NHL because I know he's older and I know he's injured. He's got to have some things looked at, but Let's hope he fixes it. He's jiggy, man. You hate to see a guy like that retire. And now all that's left, one last game at home at the ACC against the Montreal Canadiens. Important game for Montreal because they don't want Buffalo catching them. And hey, Leafs could pass St. Louis in the league standings. You can scoff at it, but it'll reduce the value of the Bruins' first round pick. So for the second last time in the 2010-2011 season, this has been LFR. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.